Hopefully we understand that the area of a shape can be defined as the surface that that 2D shape takes on any given surface. So for example, a good way of thinking about it is if we were looking at a football pitch, the perimeter is the white line that we can measure all the way around and the area is how much grass we are going to need. The grass is over the surface, it's the surface area, okay? And we measure area by cutting it up into squares. So we cut the, the length and we cut the width into squares. Therefore, our measurement is recorded in squares, meter squared, centimeter squared, any kind of measurement, but we are measuring it and recording it with square. So let's have a go at a question. Let's have a go at a rectangle with sides of four and a half meters and a width of one meter and five sixths. Okay, well what does that mean? Let's try and break it down a little bit. So, looking at the top length of four meters and a half a meter, that means we're gonna be cutting our rectangle into four equal meter width columns going across. And then the last column is only gonna be half a meter, okay? And therefore the width of one meter and five sixth of a meter would be split into one row of one meter and the last row that is a measurement of five sixths of a meter, not quite a meter. So the one half on the end, that's a fraction, and the five sixth, that's another fraction. When we overlay them, we can see our squares. And what we're needing to do is we're gonna be measuring how many squares we have, okay? So let's start. Okay, so where to begin? Well, we know that the area of a rectangle is length times width. But before we can do that, we're gonna convert our mixed numbers into improper fractions. Why do we do that? Well, we can't multiply a fraction and a whole by a fraction and a whole, okay? So we need to convert it into improper fractions so that we are just dealing with the fractions and we are multiplying those, okay? So, let's have a look. So how do we get from our one and five sixths it back into our mixed number? Well, it's pretty simple. Our unit of measurement is sixth in this example. We're looking at one and five sixths. So everything is measured from the sixth. So I have one whole, so let's make a bar of chocolate split it into six, I've got one whole of them. But in my next chocolate bar, I don't have a whole, I only have five sixths, okay? So I've got one whole, which is six sixths, and five sixths in the next one. So altogether, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven what? Well, they've always been measured in six, so we're gonna move it back into six. Okay, eleven sixths. So for my next one, four and one half, again, everything is measured in halves, so I've got four whole chocolate bars, which were measured in half. So I've got one, two, three, four whole chocolate bars, and I've got half a chocolate bar. So in total, how many halves have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the ninth, nine halves, okay? Okay, so my new improper fractions look like 11 sixths times nine halves, or nine twos, okay? And that is the hardest part. If you can get a good understanding of moving from a mixed number back into the improper fraction, you are halfway there, okay? Now, before we go ahead and multiply these numbers, we're gonna try and simplify them. And I've noticed that we've got a six on the bottom row here and a nine on the top row here. And since six and nine can both evenly be divided by three, we're gonna go ahead and simplify it a little bit, okay? So nine divided by three is three. So I can change that on that top row to a three. But whatever I do to the top row, I must do it to the bottom row. So six divided by three is two. Now sometimes you won't be able to simplify the question, but if you can, it's always worth doing because it makes our numbers a lot smaller, a lot more manageable to see and to use, okay? So my final set of improper fractions and the ones we're gonna multiply are 11 over two times three over two. And all we do when we multiply in fractions is we multiply the top row and then we multiply the second row. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 11 times three over two times two. Now 11 times three is 33, and two times two is four. So my answer as an improper fraction is 33 over four, okay? But because our question was given to us in a mixed number, we're gonna convert it back to a mixed number, okay? Now we can simply divide this if we have a good understanding of switching between improper and mixed number fractions. So we could do 33 divided by four gives us eight remainder one. But if we need to understand that a little bit clearer, let's think about it back in our chocolate bars. So I've got 33 quarters. 
So I'm going to create some chocolate bars and split them into quarters and wait till I get 33 of them. So I've got one chocolate bar, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight chocolate bars takes me to 32. So I'm going to have to have a ninth chocolate bar with one quarter coloured in, okay? So again, I've got eight whole and one left over. Now our whole fraction was in quarters, so what do we have left? We have one quarter. Each of these chocolate bars and each of these segments was worth a quarter. We've got eight whole and one quarter. But what have I forgotten? That's right, always remember to put your measurement in. Meters squared, eight and one quarter meters squared. And that's our final answer. Well done, guys. Guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe to the channel for weekly videos covering all of your mathematical needs. But for now, Matt's hero gone.